Namaste. I've told you guys in the past the story of a Vedic sage named Ashtavakra. And if you even just listen to his name, Ashtavakra, it probably reminds you of Ashtanga. So Ashtavakra actually means eight bends, like Ashtanga means eight limbs. So um, I'm going to review the story in case some of you haven't heard the story of Ashtavakra. His parents were students of Vedic philosophy. And while his mother was pregnant, she would go sit at the feet of priest and listen to the teachings. And during the time of her pregnancy, her husband came home, was like most fathers, rubbing uh, the pregnant belly, talking to his son, and recited some scripture. And his son spoke up from the womb and corrected him. The father was angry. How dare this child who's not even born correct me? And he cursed his child to be broken in eight places. So think of, you know, someone being broken or handicapped in eight different places. Um, his father uh, was very wise and was part of the king's council. And the king, I believe, was Januka, if I'm saying that correctly. And um, his father um, was one of the people that the king would counsel. And evidently, at some point, he did not please the king. And the king sent him off to the ocean for a lifetime of austerities, I think standing on one foot in the ocean. And so Ashtavakra was raised by his uncle and his mother. And when he found out about his true father and what had occurred, he wanted to go to the king to plead to him to free his father of these austerities so that he could come home. So he went to the king. And as he went to the king, you know, he's like broken. I usually demonstrate how he would be like crawling on the floor to the king. And, you know, as a king, uh, he had all these people surrounding him. And everyone <laughs> pointed and laughed at him. And the king was puzzled when Ashtabakra stopped and started laughing as well. And the king said, wait, I understand why everyone here is laughing, but why are you laughing? And Ashtabakra replied, I know why they're laughing, but I'm laughing because I know I am more than my mind and this body, in this broken body. So the king was impressed that he had, you know, this wisdom as a young man. And he asked Ashtavakra to be part of his council and he freed his father. So the story actually continues that, um, this is the part I haven't shared with you before. The story goes that Janaka really wanted to become enlightened. And so he decided to pull more people into the palace, into um, a debate. And he wanted them to debate each other with all this wisdom and demonstrate to him or help him to achieve enlightenment. Ashtavakra was there for the debates and Ashtavakra just kind of, you know, sat back and listened and watched everything. And he finally spoke up like two or three days into the debate. And he told Janaka, he said, I don't think anybody knows what they're talking about. And the king was already at a point of impatience because he had not become enlightened. And he said, I don't think they know anything about the self. And unless you know about the true self, you cannot become enlightened. Well, the king's ears perked up and he said, substantiate this. And Ashtavakra said, okay, I live in the woods. I need you to come to the woods, find me. And then once you find me, you have to follow every direction, every single thing I tell you to do. King understood, the king agreed. And so Ashtavakra went back into the forest. Janaka gathered up some knights and he gathered up his horse and some supplies. And then he took off to the forest to find Ashtavakra. Well, while they were out in the forest, it became more dense and more dense and denser and denser by the minute. 
And he got um, somehow separated from the rest of his crew. And so he's alone out in the forest, just him and his horse. And he finally came upon Ashtabhakra who was sitting underneath a tree. So he mentioned to Ashtabhakra, I have arrived. And right when he was dismounting the horse, one foot, excuse me, on the stirrup and one foot on the ground, the uh, king was ordered, stop, stay, stay there for a minute. Well, maybe not a minute, because the story goes, he actually was in that position. I can't remember if it was days, weeks, or months at a time. And then the king became enlightened. And as he became enlightened, he brought that other foot down to the earth and he bowed before Ashtabhakra, so grateful. But then he was troubled. He said, Ashtabhakra, now what do I do? Now I am enlightened. Now I realize riches are nothing. This power is nothing. I don't want to rule a kingdom. I don't need the palace. I don't need all of these things. And Ashtavakra said, no, you don't understand. Becoming an enlightened king means that you have so much more to give and your people deserve an enlightened king. So there's the story of one of the Vedic sages, Ashtavakra. There are two poses that I, at least I'm aware of that refer back to this Vedic sage. And the one that we're gonna be working, actually there's gonna be two that we're working on today. We're gonna to work on Ashtavakrasana, which is an arm balance. We'll save that for the end. And we're also gonna focus on Ashtang Pranan. Ashtang Pranan um, is a position that we take in the C, Surya Namaskara, the C sun salutation. It's in transition. Um, you can do it from plank pose, but you, uh, in the C sun sal, you actually do it from downward facing dog. So it kind of replaces chaturanga, but in that position, you're on eight points. Your two feet, both knees, both hands, that's six, and then your chest and your chin. I'm sure you've done this before with me, uh, but get ready to do it again. Um, let me think. We will need a couple blocks for this practice. Um, and I think that is the only props we'll need. So I'll meet you on the mat. So we're gonna start in crocodile pose. And crocodile pose, is a passive pose. It's called Makarasana. We're going to get down onto the belly and just kind of stack up your arms for a moment. And you're just going to shake and wiggle the legs, the hips, and loosen up the low back. Keep shaking, keep wiggling side to side. And then cross your arms and bow your head. As you pour down into this position, close the eyes. Notice the tunnel or the breezeway beneath the face, underneath the arms allowing for you to easily access your breath. And just breathe in and out through the nose in a deep diaphragmatic way. Feel your belly expanding on the inhale. Contracting and relaxing on the exhale. So 
Open your jaw. Your teeth, your tongue, your lips. Becoming captivated by your breath. Captivated to the point where that's your sole focus. Inhale, slide your legs closer together so they're more parallel. Lengthen back through your leg bones, shins, and feet. Stack onto your forearms. Excuse me. Heart rising upward, crown of the head, floating skyward. Now you're lengthening your legs and you're tightening into the buttocks, pushing down through the pubic bone and allowing the belly to pick up. Gaze yeah, straight ahead with your eyes. You're charging the back. Emphasizing prana in the heart. Affirming here as you hold, I joyfully rise to greet each and every new opportunity. All right, on your next inhalation, you're gonna slide your left leg out to the side. Your left arm is gonna shoot forward and your right arm to your right side, creating the shape of a four point star or the shape of a weather vane. Your limbs point to north, south, East and West. Now bend your left knee. Walk your hands or slide them up underneath your shoulders and begin to lift up a little taller. So you have this blended or hybrid position between opening the heart and this hip. Come down lower if you need to, if there's too much compression in the low back. Try not to allow the shoulders to hunch up towards the ears, provide some space. And then exhale, gently come down. You're gonna slide your left leg back, your right leg to the right side, your right arm stretches ahead, your left arm to your left side. Start creating that same four point star. Let each breath help to drop you in. Remembering that story of Ashtavakra in the Sri Bhagavad Gita, it says yoga is the journey of the self through the self to the self. So if we are going to get to know ourself, it does require some solace, some solitude, some inner work. Now let's go ahead and bend the right knee. Slide your hands up underneath the shoulders and then lift up. It's kind of a 
not really up dog, not really seal pose. but something similar. Provide a couple more breaths. And then exhale, you're gonna lower down enough to extend your right leg back. Push up to all fours and exhale into extended child's pose, keeping the arms actively reaching in front of you. Actively reaching, meaning the fingers are splayed. You're pressing down into the finger pads, into the mounds of the hands. The elbows are off the floor. You're feeling a stretch in the underside of the arms into the pit of the arms. And inhale, rock forward, tabletop. Exhaling, curling toes. Lifting up and back to Ekapada. Not Ekapada, Adamukha Svanasana. I've been sleep deprived this week, you guys. My brain has been malfunctioning a little bit. <laughs> sleep is so important. Now press into the hands, lift up and out of your seat, creating space between each vertebra. Let the front of the ankles be on the rise, head bowing in between the arms. Now this is the first downward facing dog. So if you feel like pedaling your feet or walking it out, bending one knee, sinking the opposite heel down, feel free to provide that. And then walking your feet forward to the top of the mat. Lowering down to your Uttanasana, your standing forward fold. And if you prefer the yin form of dangling, feel free to soften your knees. Nodding your head one way or the other, or a blend of each. On your next inhale, find those blocks. Set them up alongside your feet. Elevate your heels. Use the blocks to help you balance and come to toe balance. So the block's kind of having my feet here, so I'll show you. You're resting on the balls of the feet and notice how we have that tendency to lean forward. So I want you to slowly erect the spine. And then once you do that, free up your arms, circle them out and up overhead, palms joined together, elbows lay open, Setting your drishti. Your eyes are concentrating on one sedentary spot. When you're ready, bring your hands down to heart center. Take the hands back to the block, slowly lower the heels, straighten out through your legs, the blocks can be put away in this moment and just hold your uttanasana your standing forward fold on your next inhalation bend the knees lift your arms up to chair utkatasana now if your knees are surpassing your ankles shooting over the toes so you can't see them back the hips up lift up to your side lats we're gonna breathe out through the mouth. Sweeping the arms back again. Continue. Inhale all the way up. Arch it back. Exhale, hands together, Anjali Mudra as you bow forward and down. Once you come down, inhale, step your left foot back. Slowly sink your back knee, shin, and foot. And just release and melt the hips towards your front heel. Take your right hand now to your hip. Really ground the front foot. Draw up to the pelvic floor with your root block, Mulabandha. Lengthening through the vertebrae. And then as you exhale, you're going to re-sink the hips, 
And you're going to stretch the arms forward and tap the hand beyond the foot. Inhale, activate the front hamstrings as you rise. And exhale, release. Continue. One more. Set your hands to the ground, curl the back toes. This is where we step to Adho Mukha Svanasana, downward facing dog. Now our next position will be Ashtang Pranan, and this ties back into the story of the sage. So as you inhale, lift your heels high, exhale, rock your knees forward and down. And this is important. If you just bend the elbows from here, you may feel stuck. So what we do is we shift the whole upper body forward a few inches. Shoulders crank right past the wrist. Your hips stay in mid air. Your elbows bend to your side body. And this is where we drop chest and chin. Now hold it here. Two feet, two knees, two hands, chest and chin. Eight bends. Inhale. Press down to the tops of the feet. You push the chest through and up to cobra, but we're going to float the hands today. And breathe. Stimulate and strengthen the diaphragm muscle. The muscle that parachutes up and down, giving you a lift as well as a descent. Now take your hands down. We're going to roll it back today. So curl your toes, start to lift your upper body, and then just undulate back to downward facing dog. Inhale, the right foot steps through between the hands. We'll go ahead and sink the back knee, shin, foot. Now we're just kind of melting down initially. And then we're going to do that same work. Right hand to the hip. Pressurize the right foot. Inhale, drive it up. Exhale, release it down. Inhale up. Exhale down. Flow with your breath. One more. The hands come down, we'll curl the back toes, we'll step the foot forward, bow over to Uttanasana. Straighten your leg bones, drive your heart lower, and then bend your knees and inhale, Utkatasana. Exhale, breathe it out. Continue. Inhale up. Exhale, undoing we'll your hands. We'll recenter you as you humbly bow. This time we'll inhale, step back with the right foot. We'll sink the back knee, untuck the back toes, melt the hips forward and down towards the front foot. Seeing the difference between the two sides. Without damning or really desiring anything different. It is what it is. And this is what we're working with right now. 
Try not to demand anything more from your body than it's capable of in each precious moment. All right, left hand comes to the hip and spread and ground that left foot and draw it up. Remember you're lifting to the pelvic floor with that root lock and then you're melting the hips down, keeping the spine long, arm reaches out ahead of the foot to tap down. And then inhale, drive up. Exhale, release. Continue. This time, both hands stack to either side of the left foot, curl the back toes, stepping into downward facing dog. Emphasize your pranayama. Pranayama can be the gateway back to the true and authentic self. Inhale, elevate your heels. Exhale, drop knees. We're going towards Ashtanga Pranam. You're slowly rocking forward, keeping the hips up, strengthening the upper body, resting towards the chest and chin, but no pressure on the chin. And then untuck the toes. Push the heart through and up. Solidify down with the top of your thighs, your pubic bone, low belly. Want your hands and breathe. See if you can even bring the big toes together to touch, which makes it harder. See if you want that challenge. Release the hands, curl the toes under, and we're just gonna roll it back today. Once you wave it back, externally rotate the upper arms. Inhale, left foot steps through. Back knee taps the ground. Staying here for a couple breaths. And we'll go back into that same sequence. Left hand to the hip. Draw up to the pelvic floor, in and up through the navel center. And exhale, release. Now synchronize with breath. One. Take the hands down, curl the back toes, step it forward, and fold it in. Inhale, bend the knees, lift up Utkatasana. Exhale, breathe it out, sweeping the arms behind you. Inhale all the way up, arch it back, exhale, take it down. Inhale, left foot steps back, back knee drops down, untuck the back toes. And when you're ready, inhale, push down through the right foot, rise up to Anjali Asana. Place your palms together, bend and splay the arms like we did in toe balance. And then I want you to give yourself a little chest bump, right? It's more about the mid thoracic spine. Take your hands, lace them together up underneath the base of the neck, grip a hold of the base of the skull and provide some traction as you lean your head into your hands. 
Make your inner body feel bright. And then if you want to sink down through the hips, you can test the waters. Release the hands. Curl the back toes under, step it to downward facing dog. Improve the quality of your position by improving the quality of your breath. Improve your mental focus by improving the quality of your breath. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, descend to knees. Chest, chin, ashtang, pranam. Inhale, glide through the cobra. Feel free to come up higher, hands to the ground. See if those big toes become a little closer, zipping up through the legs. Curl the toes under, roll it back. Downward facing dog. Inhale, left foot steps through. Back knee drops down. Inhale, way down the left foot. Rise up on Johnny Asana. And once here, hands together, arms splay. Place your hands, draw it up, lean it back, chest bump, inner body bright, maybe lowering the hips. Releasing the hands, curling the back toes, launching your way forward, and then letting go. Inhale, chair. Exhale, breathe it out. <sighs> Cleansing breaths. <sighs> Inhale to the top. Exhale, Anjali Mudra, hands. Coming back into the forward fold. Inhale, left foot back. Exhale, spill the back knee to the floor. And instead of having your left hand right beside the foot, offset it just a little bit. Reach the right arm through. Circle it up towards the sky and spin to your right. Reach the arm back behind, clockwork it down, and then continue in this clockwise manner. Releasing the right hand, curling the back toes, stepping to downward facing dog. Inhale, lift, exhaling, ashtang pranam. Inhale, slither through, cobra snake. Exhaling, adhokha svanasana, downward facing dog. Inhale, left foot steps through, back knee sinks down. I'll set your right hand and get ready. Left arm lengthens, and this time that arm is circling counterclockwise. Work with your breath. Inhale, takes it forward and up. Exhale, tells, takes it back and down. Release the hand, curl the back toe, step it through. And fold it down, drape your head. Nod your head.
couple more deep breaths. Not taking it for granted. And then we're going to find those blocks, bring them back alongside the feet. We're going to lift the heels. Come back to toe balance. And from that toe balance, <clears throat> we are going to rewrite the spine. Bring the arms back up overhead, palms together. Balance and breathe. Exhale, the arms are gonna to spray to the sides and you're gonna have your palms resting on top and really push down through your hands. Lean forward with your torso and we're just gonna take the left leg up and down. Notice you have to use your arms, you have to use your core, your abdominals, your hip flexor, your quads, and then bring that foot back. Hands to heart center. And then there's two sides here. So we'll place the palms back down. Lean forward with the chest. Take the weight off the right foot, sail it forward. And maybe see if you can lengthen both legs out and then sit down. How was that? <laughs> Shake out the knees. All right, we're going to come back up, except I want you to try this first. Bring your blocks now back behind your hips. We're in that Dandasana position, staff pose. The hands come back to the blocks and slide your heels back and lift your buttocks off the floor. And then maybe lift your heels, maybe cross your ankles. And this is Tolasana. Well, typically you'd be a lotus, but we're doing it this way today. And then sit back down. Woo, it's a lot. All right, bend your knees. You're gonna take your blocks and set them up in front of you with space. And then your legs are gonna cross over to the left. So it's like you're doing Dandasana, but at an angle. Hands come behind you. We're gonna work with the right leg. Inhale, lift it up and cross it over. And the reason why we're working with this is, this part is usually where it confuses people. What do I engage to lift my body up? Well, we're working on that at least here, using some of the abdominals, using the strength of the hip flexors, as well as the quadriceps. And you're just taking your time Lifting it up, crossing it over, block by block. And so this way you're building strength, but you're also building up the body awareness so that when it's time to play with certain postures in our practice, you'll know how to implement it. All right, now bend the knees. Now you can keep going if you want for that, but it is sneaky work and I don't want you to be terribly sore. Soreness is good unless it goes too far. Lift your left leg. Obviously the slower you go, the more you're gonna feel it. You don't have to operate at the same pace that I am. And you may find one side's weaker than the other. And if that's the case, when you do your home practice, you can do that weak side a little more. All right, we're gonna bring the legs back. All right, I'm gonna move those blocks now. We're gonna work up into the pose Ashtavakrasana. And I think I'll face you for this. 
Um, I'm not gonna marry you. <laughs> so bend your right knee. Flare the knee open, catch the foot. We're just gonna warm up the hip a little bit more. Pick it up. You can have one hand hold to each, or you can cradle hold the leg. You're lifting and squeezing it in towards the chest, and we're going into rock the baby pose. That's just a little mini twist side to side. And then we're gonna rock forward and back. Forward and back. Your left hand will come to the toes, open it up so that you can drop down, you're rounding your back to push the right arm into the right leg. The leg will then squeeze to the arm. Now this is elephant trunk pose. Palms together, you lean forward like we did on the box, elevate the left ankle. Then crisscross, start to hinge from the elbows, lean forward and stretch the legs out to the side. Keep your head up. You're looking out with your eyes. And then come out. Keep together for a moment. I suppose it's fun. <laughs> that was the second arm balance I ever learned after crow. And when I started to learn that pose, I could get it to one side and I couldn't the other side. So it took me a few months to finally get the other side. And you may find the same occurrence happens with you. It's actually quite normal. Straighten out your legs. Don Dawson staff, shoulders back, bend your left knee. Flare it open, grab the foot, and determine from this side of your body what is best, handhold or cradle hold. And once you have it down, rock side to side, rock the baby, and then taking it forward and back. Good. Right hand to the left foot. And then you bring that arm down because it stuffs, right? Right below the knee. And you push back the thigh, opening the hip, set the palm to the floor, squeeze the leg to the arm, mirror or match that right hand to the other side, lean forward, use your arm bones and upper body strength to lift, then elevate your right ankle. Maybe that's all you can do, that's okay. Maybe crisscrossing all you can do, that's okay. Maybe striking the full pose if possible. Have fun with it. It's just yoga. When I say it's just yoga, I mean the postures, not the full embodiment of the practice. All right, when you come out, bring the back of your hands together. Turn your fingers in towards your heart, up towards your chin, and then wiggle them. Rotate the wrist. That's a lot. Shake it out. When you're ready, we're gonna roll down to the spine. So if you want to activate your core, with the belly in, reach the arms forward. Roll it down, nice and easeful. Head releases, shoulders release. And walk the feet in, but you're gonna keep the feet to the floor, at least one. Cross your right leg over your left. Open your arms. Roll the knees to the left. So if it's too much, you can use the right foot underneath like a kickstand to keep the knees elevated. If it feels really yummy, take your left hand to your knee and you can lower it towards the floor. You may not touch, that's not really the intention. It's just to deepen the twist of it. Unroll. Uncross, 
And then cross left leg over right. When you're ready, take the knees to that side. Remembering the left foot could work like a kickstand. And on this side, I have to use it that way. But you might be able to bury it down with the use of the right hand. Make sure your breath is open and free. So there's a yin pose that we're going to do after this twist. That's called stirrup. Now I wanted to do this pose since the king, when he arrived into the forest, had one foot in the stirrup and one foot on the ground. Draw the knees back up and cross. So I've actually renamed stirrup pose to tree frog because stirrups, you know, I mean, it just tends to have a negative uh, idea with women. <laughs> so pick up the feet, separate your knees. Your thighs are really open here. Your low back is anchored. This is our counter after the twist. And if you would like to be in recline butterfly for Shavasana, you can take the blocks under your knees or you can use a bolster under your thighs. If you want regular corpse pose, just spread out on your back, close your eyes. And I highly suggest an eye bag over the brow or a towel over the eyes. It just helps us to drop in more. It can stimulate the vagus nerve, which can really calm us down, enhance our relaxation. Oh, rhythmic breathing. And eventually you can let the control of the breath go. Try to maintain this quiet internal focus that you've gathered from the practice. To seek, to find, to discover and revel in your true self.
Let's slowly lift the knees. If you have a bolster, you can step the feet on top or you can tuck them into your chest. Roll the way to one side of your body and come up to take a seat. Closing the eyes. I encourage you to sit and meditate after any or all of your classes that you do from home because the postures, the pranayama, is the perfect prelude to be able to sit in meditation with less distraction, with more focus, and with more intention. But for now, we'll close out at least this portion. Bring your hands to Anjali Mudra and bow your head. May we all walk away from this practice more free and at peace from anything out of our control, anything imposed upon us by another, and by any internal troubles of our own. Om peace, peace, peace. Thank you for joining today.